The Supreme Court is currently hearing a case that could eliminate regulations on business. Conservative mega donors and business groups have thrown in their support behind a convenience store that is challenging debit card fee limits. Now, this sounds like it's, oh, a small case, but actually, when it comes to these business groups and large conservative donors, there's a reason that they're throwing their weight behind this because it could effectively eliminate the ability for the federal government to have regulations. According to the Lever, plaintiffs in the case, Corner Post v. Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System are actually asking the court to overturn a long-standing statute of limitations that currently protects federal rules from certain legal challenges once they've been finalized for 60 years. And so if they win, it could unleash an onslaught of attacks against all federal regulations. Devin Ambris, Senior Director of Courts and Legal Reform at the Public Policy Advocacy Group Center for American Progress, who co-authored a report last week warning that the case could open a Pandora's box for federal deregulation. Now, I realize this is not the sexiest topic, okay? But it is incredibly important, uh, as they point out, health safety, the economy, food, and drug safety, the environment, basically everything that we take for granted has been protected by federal agencies, and all of that is at risk, according to this report. This is very bad if the Supreme Court rules in their favor. So let me give you more context here, all right? So look, the statute of, uh, of limitations is pretty vital to regulation. And now to show you, to kind of illustrate how this, uh, how this uh, is that vital. The group Public Citizen noted in its amicus brief, the statute of limitations, which has been used since the 1940s to fend off challenges to decade-old regulations that restrict oil and gas use on public lands, set minimum wages for farm workers, and govern employees' ability to secure work visas for temporary foreign workers, among other things. Okay, so that's, again, more examples of what could be impacted here if the court rules in favor of this company challenging credit card, uh, I'm sorry, debit card uh, fee limits, okay? And make matters worse, the same conservative law firm that actually ended affirmative action back in July and blocked President Biden's student debt relief has brought this case to the very pro-corporate Supreme Court. Tyler Green, the lead law, uh, lawyer for the plaintiffs, had also once clerked for Clarence Thomas and is also the administrative trustee for Leonard Leo's massive dark money fund, the $1.6 billion Marble Freedom Trust. You also have these pro-business uh, groups, including the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Cato Institute, all sorts of uh, you know dark money groups that are Coke-backed that are lining up to support the corner post case, filing briefs urging the judges to grant a favorable ruling. So the rule that they're trying to get rid of it's called the Administrative Procedure Act, which passed back in 1946. Uh, basically, it only allows facial challenges, lawsuits to argue a federal regulation is illegal, and asking a judge to strike it down to such rules for the first 60 years after they are finalized. Now, the reason they have this is because a uh, statute of limitations is uh, to keep regulations fairly stable. If it's not challenged and repealed within the first six years, then it's a safe bet that this rule is going to be in effect for a long time, okay? That sets up a fairly stable regulatory environment for companies. And that's actually good for companies because they know what the ground rules are, all right? They know that things are generally going to stay the same. Companies like stability uh, and profitability, right? And stability helps with profitability because you know what the regulations and the rules are going to be are going to be, and you can plan around them, all right? That makes sense. Now, the debit card fee cap was finalized back in 2011. That's part of Dodd-Frank. That means the company had until after 2017 to challenge the rule directly. So, now they didn't. Okay? Uh, and that's because they opened up later after the rule was finalized. So, now they're claiming, well, look, uh, since, you know, uh, we just got impacted. Because when we opened, we were impacted by the rule. And so that statute of limitation shouldn't apply to us. We should be able to challenge the rule. 
even though that statute of limitations has passed. Okay? Now, here's the thing. It's not like there isn't other ways to challenge the rule, right? For example, they could petition the Federal Reserve, right? Uh, the lever explains that alternative processes usually take longer and provide agencies an opportunity to invite public comments and review a full record of up-to-date evidence, according to Public Citizen's Brief. Now, the problem with that, according to these companies, is, oh, well, now we'd have to have public comment in order to get rid of this rule. Well, what if people like this regulation? Or what if they don't know that this regulation exists, but find out that it actually protects them from being, uh, you know, uh, taken advantage of by us? Well, we don't want that to happen. We don't want public comment. We don't want people to know that these regulations actually exist to protect them. No, we would like to avoid that. And we would like to speed up the process of eliminating this regulation because it impacts our profit potential. Now, lawyers for the convenience store are arguing that the six-year window only begins when a company is impacted by the rule. Okay, so what that would mean is that if the Supreme Court rules in their favor, any company at any time could claim that a rule that they don't like just impacted them and therefore they could take them to court in order to get this eliminated. Now think about this. What would happen? You have brand new entities that could be created that could challenge any rule or regulation because, oh, look, it just impacted me. Ah, damn, I just got impacted by the rule. Sorry. Now, the result, of course, would be absolute chaos. Right now, the court is hearing both sides of the case. It just started earlier on Tuesday, uh, and I, I don't have a lot of hope. That said, there's a glimmer. There is a glimmer. Uh, and that's the fact that the court has never actually heard a case like this. Okay. Uh, now, getting back to um, one of the uh, 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 officials that have filed an amicus brief on this case, um, apparently it's very difficult for them to predict where the justices are going to rule based on the legal questions involved. Okay. Uh, quote, hopefully many of them will be alarmed by the potential consequences of ruling in favor of, of the petitioners here. Which, again, makes sense because it'd be disastrous for the economy as there would be a flood of court cases on every single regulation on the books. So that is, again, potentially disastrous. But at the same time, hopefully, members of the court will realize, even the, again, the most pro-corporate ones will realize, well, well, now wait a minute here. This could ultimately be bad in the long run as every regulation is going to be challenged and it's going to completely upset the business environment that everyone is is pretty much used to all for what uh, an eventual short-term gain well that's if the economy survives all of these different challenges and the completely uh, different changing rule book uh, that would happen if you have non-stop legal challenges to every rule so it, again it would be caught chaos and that is something to think about I, I don't really share his optimism but for all of our sakes i hope he's right 